for me, the most suffering would come from knowing my that I have so much potential and I'm complacent. Yes, Hell, that would be the most meeting the suffering. person you could have been. That's fucking interesting. Having so, knowing that I have something to offer to other people, yep. to the world in some way. It doesn't have to be grandiose, but whatever way it is, knowing that I have something to offer and I'm just taking it easy and chilling all the time. For me, that would be the ultimate suffering. It's whatever the in, it's whatever the potential is that I feel like is inside of me. Wanting to make sure that I'm maximizing that potential. That doesn't need to be, I have to be the one doing everything. It could be, I'm gonna get wiser and I'm gonna impact 10 people who are doing everything. You know, it's a different transition of impact and service. Yeah, I think it's the whole analogy of like, I don't know if this is a religious terminology where it's like, instead of asking God or the universe for less workload, it's asking for a stronger back. I think it's, it's all comes down to the emotional and mental shoulders and learning how to navigate our emotions in the world with the scale of people and problems that come up with. That's when I think of harmony and peace. Not of like, I'm not gonna be around any problems or stress or isolated. That's not what I'm talking about. It's about how can I be the alpha gorilla in chaos and just walk through and just move things around when I need to. As opposed to be screaming like a monkey all the time, freaking out when there's stress and chaos and fighting. No, I just know I've got broad shoulders and I can see my surroundings and I can be like, okay, you guys need to break up this fight. You need to come over here a little more and you need to stop doing this and be able to navigate it and not let it trigger me. That's what I feel like. It's, it's becoming more of an emotional, aware human as every new season and, and level comes to me. And that's why I feel like there will always be some type of uncomfortable feeling or doubt. There'll be a moment of like, okay, I don't know how to speak Spanish. This whole room is speaking Spanish, I don't understand. So of course, I don't understand, but can I be confident and comfortable not knowing it and being okay with being the outside person here in this space? Can I still hold myself confidently and just listen and pay attention? Can I be okay with not being okay? And I think that's the game. It's like learning how to do that at different levels. I'm sure you learned that when you've had your first 20 and 40s, you probably felt comfortable to a level, and then you got to 50 and it's like, ah, how do I manage this? You have to create new systems. You have to learn something new about yourself. Emotionally manage it. Then 500 employees, then 1,000. It's like, ah, I'd be like, what do I do? How do I manage this? You had to go through that in the uncomfortable phase, and now you can manage it. You've got broader shoulders, emotionally and mentally to face those things. And I think that's just it. I keep leveling up into the meaningful mission. And figuring out whatever fear you have, you gotta go all in on this stage to support you to not break down this type of mission. So for me, I like having a big mission. I don't think you need a big mission, but I think you do need a meaningful mission. When I was broke on my sister's couch, I couldn't think beyond making enough money to get my own life. That was the mission. And I only had the skills at that time, emotionally, mentally, to, to do that one thing. I couldn't think beyond it. But once we get to the new level, then we can start to do those things. One of the things that I think about is creating a healthy identity for ourselves. That's part of the greatest mindset. When I used to be self-critical, beating myself up, punishing myself, probably similar to eating sometimes, it wasn't a healthy identity. It wasn't a healthy identity. When we constantly are the ones saying mean things to us. If we had a loudspeaker in the world and everyone heard what we said to us, We'd go to prison or a mental hospital or something. We'd be canceled online for hate speech, whatever it is. Self-aimed hate speech. Self-aimed hate speech. We would be canceled. We would be you know, blocked from every platform. If, we, if what we thought about ourselves and the nasty identity we have, or if we said this to others, it would be horrible.